Welcome to the induction ceremony for the fourth class of the Hot Dog Alumni Hall of Fame here at the beautiful and brand new Prairie Creek Park. I wanted to start tonight's events by introducing the mayor of the city of Frankfurt. In my notes out here. <laughs> mayor Judy Sheets was born and raised in Frankfurt. She spent nearly 30 years working for the Frankfurt Police Department before being elected clerk treasurer for the city of Frankfurt. She served in that capacity for 12 years before becoming mayor. Mayor Sheets has extensive experience in local policy and finance and began her first term as mayor in 2020. And in her time as mayor, she has worked too hard to increase collaboration and partnerships with community leaders and residents. Please welcome to the stage, Mayor Judy Sheets. Good evening, everyone, on this beautiful evening. As Tyler said, our new Prairie Creek Park, isn't it beautiful? We love it here. So I just, I want to welcome everyone this evening. I want to start off by welcoming the five new inductees into the Frankfurt Hot Dog Hall of Fame. I, I also want to welcome the former inductees into the Hall of Fame, Frankfurt Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Are they here tonight? Is there anybody here tonight? Okay, okay, welcome. And then most of all, I want to thank the friends, the family, the classmates that have come out here tonight to support them and to show how much you care about them. We are so proud of these five inductees, even though they have been from different classes, they've had different walks of life. There's one thing that will always remain the same, and they are a Frankfurt High School alumni. And that's something to be proud of. And the city of Frankfurt is so proud of these inductees tonight. Um, I ask that um, after this is over, take the time to spend with them and to find out more about them. It's so exciting to know how everybody's journey in life has gone forward. And so as always, go hot dogs. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Next, since this is the Frankfurt High School Hall of Fame event, we are going to introduce the principal of Frankfurt High School, Cindy Long Schaefer. Hi, as Tyler mentioned, I'm Cindy Long. I'm the principal of Frankfurt High School, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our fourth annual Hot Dog Hall of Fame. As a lifelong Frankfurt resident, I've had the pleasure to know so many exceptional people from our community, and it's exciting to have this opportunity to celebrate the successes and reminisce about the way that Frankfurt has shaped so many of us. The opportunity to celebrate the Hall of Fame Class of 2021 here at the Hot Dog Festival and is exceptionally appropriate. Just like our inductees for this evening, Frankfurt High School and our community at large are growing and striving to reach new heights. And this beautiful new park where we get to currently celebrate is wonderfully symbolic of the growth that we are experiencing as a community and as a school. As the principal of Frankfurt High School, I strive to highlight for our students the ways people just like them, hot dogs, have gone out to positively impact our world. My greatest hope is that our students recognize that they have not only the ability, but the responsibility to create a future that is bright for all of us. The Hall of, Hall of Fame plaques that will hang in the main hallways of Frankfurt High School will remind them of the successes that former hot dogs have had and inspire them to continue to be great. We continue to thank our Hall of Fame inductees present and past for being here with us tonight and making us all proud to be hot dogs. It's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Joel McKinney, the superintendent of the Community Schools of Frankfurt. Thank you, Cindy. On behalf of the Board of School Trustees, I also want to welcome everyone. What a wonderful turnout on such a beautiful evening. This is just going to be a great program this evening. Thanks for being here. We do have one school board member that I know is here this evening, and that's Karen Sutton. Karen, thank you for being here this evening. 
conduct these congratulations. Uh, we're so proud and we're so glad that you are outstanding representatives and role models for all of our students at Frankfurt High School and in our school corporation. And it is my pleasure this evening to introduce someone you've already gotten to see a couple of times, and that's our Master of Ceremonies. So Tyler Stock is a 2005 alumni of Frankfurt High School where he was a three-sport athlete, football, basketball, and baseball. He went on to Butler University and earned a degree in communications. He's a real estate agent currently in North Vernon, Indiana. He and his wife, Annie, have four children. Thank you, Tyler, for taking your time to work hard to prepare for this program this evening and for doing this year after year. Please join me in welcoming our Master of Ceremonies, Tyler Stock. Okay, yep, I'm back again. <laughs> um, so this is my fourth year being the MC for this event, and uh, every year I leave very inspired, and I see a lot of faces that I've seen in the audience uh, in previous years, so I'm glad that people are coming back over and over again uh, because the stories and the accomplishments and the achievements these people have to say and share uh, are amazing, and I think a lot of us maybe take for granted uh, because we've lived here, uh, once you move away, you realize how good you have it. So the 2021 class is comprised of five inductees that are sitting behind me here. We will uh, hear from them in just a few minutes, uh, but since I have the microphone, I'll take a few minutes to give my opinion on the evening. The Hot Dog Hall of Fame inducted its inaugural class in 2018. With the induction of today's class, there will be now 39 members to this prestigious club. The Hot Dog Hall of Fame recognizes graduates of Frankfurt High School who have achieved extraordinary lifetime achievements. The Hall of Fame members meet that criteria and, ex and exp or expand upon that even bro broader than just being extraordinary. To date, we've inducted a billion dollar computer software creator, a multi-platinum musician, professional actors, doctors, historic hot dog coaches, athletes, and the list goes on and on and on. The Hall of Fame Board of Directors intentionally created the Hall of Fame to be exclusive, a very high standard for entrance and an honor of the highest level. Every year, the Hot Dog Hall of Fame Board of Directors is amazed by the caliber and accomplishments of the inductees. It appears there is no shortage of alumni des deserving to be in the Hall of Fame on the horizon. My dad and I often talk about Frankfurt and try to figure out the secret sauce that's fostered a small town to produce such accomplished alumni. Now I'm not an intellectual scholar, but I enjoy analyzing this topic often, so here we go. It's as simple as having a winner's mentality. That's it. No. <laughs> well, you're probably thinking, well, what does it mean to have a winner's mentality? Winners have three characteristics. One, they believe in themselves. Winners never step on the battlefield and think they're going to lose. Communities and their citizens are in a constant battle against other communities for jobs, for people, for recognition to be the top at any award statistic. They always believe they're good enough to succeed. Number two, winners never let someone tell them they can't do something. There are always naysayers who write you off or laugh at your dreams. But over the course of time, hot dogs couldn't be derailed. Look no further than Case Arena, or the high school theater, or nickel plate flats directly behind us here. The industrial park, and many other venues and facilities around our community. All those facilities were sure to have faced opposition in their day, but people who thought that small towns couldn't support such first class facilities. Yet some of our fellow hot dogs never believed they couldn't do it. Lastly, winners, and number three, lastly, winners always rise to the challenge. In fact, when things get tough, winners typically shine the most. Our Hall of Fame inductees didn't luck their way into this recognition. They rose to the challenges they faced throughout their lives. Even more, the inductees can probably all point to an individual from Frankfurt, of course, that taught them how to persevere through tough times, thus creating a culture of not quitting when faced with a challenge, but rather rising to the occasion 
to make themselves in our community a better place. These core characteristics of a winner's mentality, believe in yourself, never let someone tell you you can't do something and rising to the challenge have been in our culture, whether they know it or not. One generation has passed this on to the next until it has became a normal part of life. Anyone who has moved away will tell you they didn't realize how good they had it here. There are too many examples that are not normal for a small town, but further exemplify how this culture has crossed generations, such as winning four state titles in basketball in the 1920s and 30s, to creating an industrial park that is now home to one of Frito-Lay's super plants, to revitalizing downtown with Ivy Tech and Prairie Creek Park where we sit tonight. From one generation to the next, hot dogs have bred a winner's mentality to do what others say can't be done and prove the naysayers wrong. In a few moments, you'll hear from five individuals who will all share that winner's mindset. Today, I challenge the next generation to seek those individuals and learn from them. The world is full of victims. Here's your opportunity to learn the winner's mindset. Ask them to meet you once a month. Tell them you'll go to the grocery store, to their office, to church, whatever it takes, because by improving yourself, you're also improving your community. Thus, the culture we now know is normal will continue. So let us all continue the tradition of being winners. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the induction of the fourth class of the Hot Dog Alumni Hall of Fame. A few housekeeping items before we start the introductions. Each inductee will be introduced at one at a time and they'll have the opportunity to come to the podium. Last night they received these which they need, maybe need more work. custom lapel pins uh, that were made for, for them uh, to keep. They are also receiving a plaque and as uh, Principal Long mentioned, uh, there is a wall of fame in the high school for visitors and students to look at and read and to see all the accomplishments of our Hall of Fame members. So without further ado, our first inductee. Our first inductee is Dan Kogel, class of 1971. As a former Frankfurt football player, I want to thank you for the equipment from Rydell while president of the company. And I'm told that you were a member of one of Frankfurt's elite athletic classes. So your career in sporting goods seems fitting. Here today from Arizona, welcome to the podium, Mr. Dan Kogel. I'd just like to say how fortunate I was to grow up as a Frankfurt hot dog. Secondly, I'm very fortunate to be inducted into this Hall of Fame and I very much appreciate it. I'd like to thank Don and Don and the entire board of directors. It's really a terrific honor. Uh, my first real memories of growing up in Frankfurt, I think I was three or four years old and we went to Mrs. Ash's nursery school. There were two or three uh, buddies that are here tonight that were with me at Miss Ash's nursery school. And 65 years later, those same people that were my best friends then are still my best friends today. And I think that says a lot for Frankfurt, Indiana. After that, I was a proud Riley poet, uh, then, then moved on to uh, Frankfurt Junior High School. I think we were called the Falcons, where I got to know people from all the other schools, Woodside, Kiger, et cetera. Uh, met a whole new group of friends. 
and then finally I became a Frankfurt hot dog. Um, tonight, as I was getting ready to speak, I was looking at some of the previous inductees, and it was amazing how many of them I actually knew. And those that I didn't know, uh, I certainly knew of and knew of their accomplishments. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, remember Mr. Jim Rogers. Uh, Jim was a good friend of mine. We actually served together on Indiana University Board of Directors for five or six years. And Jim and I always got a kick out of saying, couldn't believe that they would allow two hot dogs on the same uh, Board of Directors at IU. <laughs> Uh, then, of course, there's Dr. Frank Beardsley, another previous inductee. Uh, Dr. Frank was my personal physician when I was growing up, and uh, his son Rick was a very good friend of mine. I spent many, many hours and uh, many, many evenings at the Beardsley household. Likewise, uh, an inductee was John Coulter. Uh, just like the Beardsleys, spent many hours at the Coulter household, where his brother Andy was a good buddy of mine. Uh, matter of fact, I should tell the story, Andy was out in Scottsdale seeing me a few months ago, and he said, I think the board got a little confused and they gave the wrong Coulter brother the uh, nomination. And I said, you know, I think you're right. Clearly the choice should have been Patrick. <laughs> and there, finally there's Tom Ransom behind me, one of tonight's inductees. I remember as a 10 or 11 year old kid watching Tom Ransom quarterback the hot dogs. And, him and Chuck Harshman and Ron McLuhan, those guys were our absolute heroes growing up. So uh, I've known Tom a long time, and I should also say they had a hell of a team. Matter of fact, they were probably the second best team in Frankfurt Hot Dog history right after the 1971 squad. <laughs> um, seriously, I owe so many thanks to so many people in Frankfurt, the teachers I had at every level of education, uh, they were just terrific. I can still remember almost all of them to this day. Likewise, I played a lot of sports. The coaches had an incredible influence on me. So there are just so many people to thank, not including the parents of my friends, uh, citizens of the community. Just a wonderful place to grow up that really had an incredible impact on my life. Um, I'm staying across the street at the Nickel Plates Flats, which is a, a fun place. Wonderful to see when you get back to Frankfurt. I was walking around the square a little this morning, and it's amazing how many family-owned businesses there are in Frankfurt. And I know as a kid, I mean, you had Ellis Jewelry Store, had Ellis Jewelry Store, uh, you know, you had Spencer's Grocery, Colder's Furniture Store, of course, Kramer Lumber, Goodwin's Funeral Home, just tons of family-owned businesses. Of course, there was also the, the Farmer's Bank where my mother worked for 40 some years, uh, a real landmark in Frankfurt. I know my dad and I used to go up and see my mom at the Farmer's Bank. And then uh, after we were done, we'd wander next door to the uh, Southside Cigar Store for lunch. The Southside was quite a landmark in Frankfurt too, for those of you that don't remember it. Uh, my mom didn't necessarily think it was a great idea for me to have lunch there, but uh, the things you could learn as a 10-year-old kid at the South Side were pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, I do have one plea for tonight, and that is never, ever let anybody change the nickname. Uh, Frankfurt hot dogs are known everywhere. Uh, I'm sure in today's politically correct world, there's probably a few people that think it should be changed. Don't let them change it. Uh, I can tell you I spent my life in the sporting goods business, Knew a lot of you know famous athletes, guys like Michael Jordan or Joe Montana, uh, Payne Stewart, George Brett, those kind of guys. And I would be having dinner with them or maybe just drinking a beer. And inevitably the question would come up, uh, where'd you grow up? You know, I'd ask them and then they'd ask me and I'd say, well, I grew up in Frankfurt, Indiana. And then immediately, almost all these guys would say, you were a Frankfurt hot dog? <laughs> I'd say, yeah, I was a Frankfurt hot dog. And, uh, you know, most of these guys didn't grow up anywhere around Indiana, let alone Frankfurt, yet all of them knew of the Frankfurt hot dogs. So don't ever let anybody change that nickname. You know, nobody remembers the Lebanon Tigers, nobody remembers the Kokomo Wildcats, everybody remembers the Frankfurt hot dogs. And the last thing is a brief story about my father that I'd like to leave you with because I think it epitomizes the people of Frankfort, Indiana. As some of you may know, my dad uh, had a stroke and for the last couple of years of his life was paralyzed from the waist down and living in Wesley Manor. 
At the time, my wife and I were living and working in Chicago, so we could only get down here on the weekends, which left, you know, four or five days of uh, him, in theory, being by himself. I say in theory because I swear every day somebody from Frankfurt was in his room talking to him. Whether it was his friends, my friends, uh, or just people from the community, somebody was there to support him. And I really appreciate that, and I think, again, it epitomizes what Frankfurt, Indiana is all about. Anyway, I'm very proud to be a hot dog. I appreciate you all coming tonight, and have a good evening. you're worried that you can't see the screen tonight where we have these uh, welcome videos the the event tonight is being recorded and will be on our hot dog YouTube channel uh, which will also have these welcome videos so if you can't see them this evening you'll be able to find them on YouTube um, and watch them on there okay our next inductee actually needs no introduction mr. Tom Ransom class of 1963 Mr. Ransom has been a pillar of the community for decades. It feels like yesterday, Mr. Ransom, that I would get out of my dad's truck, we'd go into Kramer Lumber to get what we needed, and to this day, I still enjoy the smell of going into the hardware store. Thank you for representing our community with professionalism and integrity as you traveled around the country as a football official. Please welcome our next inductee, Mr. Tom Ransom. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was quoted as saying this about an accepted speech. He said, be sincere, be brief, and be seated. <laughs> well, once upon a time, many years ago, a man knocked at the heavenly gate. His face was tired and old. He stood before the man of fate for admission to the fold. What have you done, St. Peter asked, to gain admission here? Well, I've worked as a football referee, sir, for many and many a year. Pearly gates swung open wide, St. Peter rang the bells. Come in and choop your heart, my son. You've had your share of hell. <laughs> I remember my first Big Ten assignment was in 1983. Penn State at Ohio State in the Ohio State Horseshoe Stadium with a crowd of over 120,000 people. In the locker room before the game, I talked to the crew and I said, how do I get rid of the nerves, the shakes, the pregame jitters? They said, once you blow your whistle, all that goes away. <laughs> it's 
I want to express my sincere appreciation to the Hot Dog Hall of Fame Committee for inviting me to become a member. Your thoughtfulness is a gift I will always treasure. I wish to accept this Hall of Fame Alumni Award on behalf of my class, the class of 1963, the first class to graduate from the new school building. And in memory of my wife, Marilyn, who was a part of that class. All were hot dog graduates. I'd like to thank my family, Todd Mark, Melissa Robb, Jack and Sally, and their families. And I want to thank my friend Judy, all my football officiating friends, the Indiana High School Athletic Association, the Big Ten Conference, the National Football League, and my co-workers at Kramer Lumber. I truly appreciate the confidence you showed in me. My name is Tom Ransom. Frankfurt has always been my home. I graduated from Frankfurt High School in 1963 and Indiana University in 1967. I served one year as a principal and teacher in the Bloomington school system. Then I moved back to Frankfurt to join my family as an employee of Kramer Brothers Lumber Company. I joined my grandfather, my father, and brother Jack at Kramer Lumber. I worked for over 50 years until retirement a few years ago. We established a home center type business, and many of you here tonight were customers. We truly appreciated your business and were so grateful for the trust you placed in us. My father and the Frankfurt schools taught me to get involved in the Frankfurt community. Serving my community has been a joy and privilege I am grateful for. Much of what I accomplished would not have been possible if not for the amazing people in this community. Over the past years, I have served on the Frankfurt School Board, the Frankfurt Utility Board, the Middle School Building Corporation, the Indiana Lumber Association, Rotary, and the City Board of Works. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. In school as a Frankfurt hot dog athlete, I participated in football, basketball, and tennis. It was participating in these sports that I learned the true team concept and the importance of giving back. Now that I've learned about me and much of my background, let's explore my life as a football official. My dilemma coming out of high school was how do I stay involved in athletics? This was in 1965, when then I made a decision to become a football official. At a weekend in the fraternity house, I listened to one of the boys' fathers talk about being a Big Ten basketball official. So then in 1966, I got my license to officiate high school ball. In 1972, I started officiating Division III football, which is Butler and Wabash to fall in those schools. 1981, I was assigned my first Big Ten assignment, which was Ohio University at Minnesota. And then in 1983, I, left, I received a letter from the Big Ten inviting me as a full-time member of a staff of nine crews, eight men on a crew. I was hired as what was termed a headlinesman. One of my early Big Ten assignments was Wisconsin at Northwestern. This was about my third game of the season with this crew of guys. And we were in the locker room before each game, getting dressed and such. And, and the fellow that worked across the field from me, a guy named Eddie Marisic from Chicago, I noticed that toward the end of getting ready to go on the field, he'd walk out of the room and go in the shower and say a prayer. So as we were walking on the field, I said, hey, I, I really believe that's a great thing. I said, tell me what you pray for. He said, well, first of all, Tom, I pray that nobody gets hurt today. All these players get along fine. He said, second, I pray that we all make it home after the game. We all have a safe trip, the officials, the fans, and everybody. And he said, third, I pray that all the tough calls are on your side of the field. <laughs> I officiated in over 300 
Division I NCAA football games. During that time, I officiated in 14 bowl games in four different countries. 1988 was a big year for me. I was assigned the Rose Bowl. I got the assignment from the conference office in the Big Ten, and I immediately called my parents and said, guess what, I'm gonna officiate the Rose Bowl. Well, we're going with you. So I called my sister Sally and I said, Sally, believe it or not, I'm gonna officiate the Rose Bowl. Well, we're going with you. So a total of 19 members of my family followed me in 1988 to the Rose Bowl, a game between Michigan State and Southern Cal. And it was a tough game. In fact, it was the first game that a Big Ten school had won in seven years. And so after the game, we met in the parking lot, we got in the van, and, and uh, I had some pretty tough calls during the game. And so as we were driving back to the hotel, I told my family, I said, now listen, I don't want you to take any of that language that was coming from, from people at me. Take it personal, please don't do that. And my son Todd, who's sitting in the back, said, that's okay, Dad, we were booing you too. <laughs> Other bowl games included, I did two Orange Bowls, a national championship in 92, Fiesta Bowl, Gator Bowl, Citrus Bowl, Japan Bowl, and several more. As I walked on the field in many of these games, I would ask myself, how did I ever get to this level of football officiating? Me, who is from this hot dog town of 15,000 population. I retired in 2004 from working on the field and was asked to join the inaugural NCAA college football replay program. It took a few years to initiate the replay program, but I do believe it is a great program. Early in the season, I had a game at Purdue. Ohio State played at Purdue and I was the replay official in the replay booth. And Purdue had the ball down close to scoring and they fumbled the ball and it appeared to the Ohio State fell on it. So the referee called timeout, killed the play and sent it back up to us in the replay booth. Well, the replay official who I was is the guy that makes the final call, you know, six, six million people sitting at home waiting to know what happened. And uh, so I'm going through this and I come up with a decision and I say, I believe Ohio State should have the ball. Well, just send my phone ring. And I thought, oh gosh, the conference office is calling to tell me I've made a mistake. So I pick up the phone and I say, hello? And on the other end I hear this, Tom, this is your sister. I'm in the stadium and we made the wrong decision. <laughs> Past 10 years I've worked for the Big Ten and the National Football League attending games and writing evaluations on college football officials working that game. I'm often asked about certain players, coaches, and other happenings on the field. I remember, and many people ask, what was the highlight of your officiating career? Well, the highlight of my career was working a Big Ten Division I game, Northwestern at Kansas, as a headlinesman, and next to me on the field, was my son Todd, who also now works in the Big Ten Conference. Quite an experience. I remember one of the first encounters I had with Joe Tiller. I, I really developed a good relationship with Joe Tiller, but in the third game I had his sideline, I noticed as he'd go up and down the sideline, he had this piece of paper with him all the time. And so finally I said, hey coach, I said, I see you got that piece of paper. I said, what is it? Well, he said, Tom, I've got every official's picture in this game on this piece of paper. He said, I see your name, I see your wife's name, I see where you're from, I see where you went to school, I see where you graduated, I see when you came in the Big Ten. And I said, really? He said, what do you do with that? Well, he said, that's easy. He said, you know, if you make a good call, I'll take time and I'll write a note on it. Good call, and I'll grade you on that good. I said, what happens otherwise? He said, if you make a bad, bad call, I take my pencil and I get your face just like that. And I just rub it out. And then I know how to grade you on that call. I remember my, in 1973, my first Wabash Paul game. Quite a game in Indiana. But anyway, at that time, uh, years ago in 73, 
the student body was right up against the sideline all the way around the field and usually 10 or 20 people deep. And as I went out one time to mark the ball and came back and backed up against the student body, I stood there a minute and I felt something. Like, Look, some Wabash kid had stole my flag. In 1991, I had the Michigan-Ohio State game when a player from Michigan named Desmond Howard ran back a 95-yard kickoff return and gave the famous Heisman Trophy pose right in front of me. In 89, Notre Dame was ranked number one and Michigan was ranked number two. Yeah, I had that game also, so I took my dad and my son Rob with me to that game. And they witnessed one of the most electrifying performances when Notre Dame's running back, Rocket Ishmael, ran two long kickoff returns back for touchdowns to beat Michigan at home and cross the goal line right in front of me. I also remember 94 between Michigan and Colorado, a game that ended up with a pass with time out on time gone on the clock. And it was the Hail Mary pass and is known today as one of the top five voted uh, college games ever played. My congratulations to all the new Frankfurt Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Congratulations to you people. Looking back on my career, I've accomplished many things, but what I cherish more than any city position, any Big Ten game, any bowl game, what I cherish more are the relationships that I have made. The people I've worked with, the football officials I've lined up beside, the committees I've served on, but the friends and the families, that's what I cherish the most. I leave you with this one thought, and that is, I think that I shall never see a satisfactory referee around whose head a halo shines, whose judgment calls are just like mine, who blows his whistle as I would, and as his flag goes, I say good. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can referee. Hail to dear old Frankfurt and go hot dogs. next inductee is extremely bright and bleeds hot dog blue. Dr. Roger Frank Robinson, class of 1954. Don't get me wrong, your medical accomplishments are very impressive, but you know we are here in Frankfurt, so everyone will want to discuss your book about every case in the Frankfurt hot dogs, as well as your historical knowledge about Indiana high school basketball. Please welcome our next inductee, Dr. Robinson. The film clips are nice. They come from the Goodwin funeral home so that as soon as you die, they can recycle them. Um, four score and three years ago, uh, which for some of you who are mathematically uh, disinclined, that's uh, 1938, 
my uh, father and my uh, brother got up early to come down to the Frankfurt courthouse and get a hunting license in the fall and October and uh, nippy out and as they crossed they got here a little early to get down to the courthouse and they waiting for the courthouse to open they go over to Wheeler's restaurant which was on the uh, northeast uh, north uh, east side of the square have a cup of coffee waiting for the office to open and as they're crossing the courthouse lawn a uh, little old guy uh, about my age and size of gray hair came running up to him and he said uh, hi he said uh, I'm Joe Quigley. Uh, who are you guys? And my father and my brother introduced themselves. And he said, uh, I ran away from Frankfurt 50 years ago. Now, again, if you're challenged, that's 19, uh, that's 1888. This guy ran away. He said, I ran away from Frankfurt 88 to join the circus. And uh, I said, we were dirt poor and I didn't have anything. And, uh, and he says, I, I, I've made it now. He says, I've, I've come back to Frankfurt to tell my friends and neighbors about it. He said, I'm a success. I own property. And, uh, and he said, I, I can't seem to find any of the, of the old people that were here in 88. And uh, uh, he said, there, are you, you know any Quigleys around? And uh, Dad and my brother said, well, no, uh, we don't. Uh, he said, well, how about the Rydal Hoovers? Are there any Rydal Hoovers left here? No, I got route of bushes and red of bushes. No, no. He said, well, uh, what about the Gear family? Is, is old Will Gear's family here? He said, no, they they died. Uh, Will went to Hollywood. He's a, he fit right in out there. He's, he's doing well. And, uh, he said, well, what about the Major Blend, the Blend Theater? And he said, no, that's, that's the Clinton now, you know. And, well, we said, what happened to Alhambra Lake, Lake Alhambra? I can't find it. He said, no, a couple people drowned there. They had to fill that in. And he said, well, guys, he said, this is terrible. He said, I've come back here to tell him. And he broke out weeping. And uh, my dad and my brother said, well, why don't you come over to Wheeler's and have some coffee and, and tell us about your success? He said, no. He said, That's, it, it's not the same. He says, I, I wanted to tell my, my people that, that, that I made it. And so in the many years since I heard that story from my brother, I, I thought, what human nature. And we all want, to, no matter how small, how minuscule our success, we want to share that. And that's a human nature. And so I want to commend the Frankfurt Hall of Fame. And on behalf of Joe and myself, thank you. Our next inductee is the late Mr. Robert Bob Ryan, class of 1932. The world needs more people like Bob Ryan. He got an education, served his country, gave back to his community, and left the world better than he found it. Here today is his son Kent to elaborate on the ways his father's forward thinking set up set Frankfurt up for success. Our next inductee, Mr. Robert. K. Ryan. Class of 1932. <laughs> I'm getting closer by the minute. I I'm going to make this really short because the beautiful Gina Sheets is up here and she's actually a recipient, and I'm just kind of a, a lucky guy that happened to, to have a great father. Uh, please read uh, his bio. You all have some. Anyway, it, it, it gives a, a great story about him. 
Uh, a couple of things that I'm going to say that, that, that's not there is that he was an adventurer and he was lucky enough to be successful enough to travel abroad and uh, mostly he carried the IU flag but occasionally Frankfurt came up but he did go to the North Pole on a Russian icebreaker which is unique and he flew on a Concorde and came back with a Sadie yes yeah, same whatever it is Queen Elizabeth II or vice versa so as I said to a member of the committee, uh, you know, all these people that have received this honor are very deserving of that, but the truth of it is, there's people that haven't left Frankfurt that have done a magnificent job making this city what it is today. And I, not, that, not that the people that leave and have new success aren't uh, something that we should be proud of, it's just that those that stay behind to carry on the fight for our community, I think, should be recognized too. So, having said that, I would... uh, My name is Frank Arnest. Hi, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank the committee and I uh, uh, want to thank uh, Frankfurt High School for the plaque that's going up on the wall. Uh, my dad uh, definitely deserves it. And, Gina, good luck with this competition. <laughs> and actually a person I'd call a friend is Miss, Mrs. Gina Sheets, class of 1986. Subsequently, my birth year, which Gina, that makes us both young. <laughs> Gina and I worked together in state government and even went on a trade mission together to China. Uh, I haven't seen Gina, Gina in a few years, but I'm glad that she's back. She moves every other year, I believe. So. Uh, welcome to the podium and to the microphone. She can speak really loudly too. Mrs. Gina Sheets. this evening. Before I start, I definitely want to say that while I'm the one standing here, trust me, there are people that are far smarter, far more talented, work harder than I, who shared my same vision to allow me to accomplish the things that were read or that were printed in your program. I want to begin by thanking the Frankfurt Alumni Committee. Thank you for creating a program and what an opportunity to see such greatness go around the world from our community. So much to be proud of. It's important to me that I also thank my family who is in the audience tonight, my friends who are in the audience tonight, and those who are not on this stage with me, friends and family from around the world who oftentimes were pushing me, certainly were pulling me, and always stood beside me. It's important, very, very important, that I recognize Travis and how ironic it is that we're standing in this park. Travis's vision and his effort to make the world a better place, while you see it here in this community, uh, I see it all over the world. His gifts and his talents, he equally is sharing in this award tonight. He can't be here, but I thank him. It's most important that I thank Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, for these are great accolades, 
and I am so appreciative of the recognition. But for me, without the love of Christ in my life, the rest of this is in vain. Truly, I leave you with these words of encouragement. Some of you are probably in a dark spot in your life, and although we're in a festival, you might be sitting here very, very lone and isolated. I want to tell you that the world lies to you when they tell you that you're hopeless, useless, one person doesn't matter, one person can't do anything. That's a lie. You're never forsaken and you're never abandoned. Maybe you're outside of your relationship with Christ. Maybe you've never had a relationship with Christ. But I'm standing before you that Travis and I have had the opportunity to travel and live around the world. And while circumstances generally are always the same, just different location, it's the people. No two people are alike. You are handcrafted and unique in God's image. What a gift and what a blessing. One of my favorite writers, his name is Paul. He's in my favorite book. You'll find him in a letter to Ephesians. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians saying, It is by grace that you have been saved through your faith. Uh, and this is not of your hard work. Mm -mm. It's a gift from God so that no one can boast. For you are God's workmanship created in the image of Christ to do the good works that God has planned and purposed in advance for you to do. So I'm here to tell you, you're not a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. You're not an accident. You are purposely planned. One person can change the world. It's that person who collaborates and networks for the good of the whole that we see a difference made. So may you leave here tonight being proud of your community. What a group and what a group before us. And may you know that you have been created to also make a difference. Go out and be that difference. Good night and God bless. Okay, another round of applause for our inductees tonight. A few things before we depart. You must be really a lot taller than the rest of the inductees. <laughs> okay, first, I uh, would like to thank our sponsors for the event tonight. Obviously, events like these can't be possible without the sponsors. We'd like to recognize our title sponsors, Goodwin Funeral Home and the Farmers Bank. Two businesses that have always been major supporters of Frankfurt High School. Also, like to thank our student ambassadors. I think they're back there relaxing at the moment. Um, football players that have volunteered their time to uh, look after and take care of uh, the inductees and make sure they have all their needs met and uh, spend time with them. So, let's thank our student ambassadors. Also, like to thank the board of directors, a group of people who've worked countless hours uh, to execute this Hall of Fame weekend. Uh, last night, we had our first annual uh, Hall of Fame golf outing and reception at Arborwood. Um, the course looked beautiful. Uh, Arborwood, where the former country club pool was, is extremely nice. Uh, Shoops does a great job. It was a, it was a lovely evening. A lot of people telling stories and laughing and having a good time. Um, I'm sure, we'll be doing it again next year. Um, there was 132 golfers that played, uh, so it was a great turnout. And um, our board members are uh, Don Rust, who's the president, Jan Kersey, who is the vice president, my dad, Don Stock, Cindy Schaefer, Joel McKinney, John Milholland, Ed Niehaus. Craig Mundell, Bill Miller, Mike Clausen, and Matt Rhoda. As I said earlier, tonight's, um, tonight's uh, event has been videotaped by the Chamber of Commerce. It'll be on the Frankfurt Hot Dog YouTube channel, uh, and you'll be able to see the videos and everything on there, so don't forget that. Um, if you've got programs, and you know there are people that, are, that need to be in the Hall of Fame that aren't yet, on the last page, there is a nomination form. 
please fill that out and submit it. There's instruction on how you can do that. We also have a website. Uh, we're housed under the uh, Education Foundation website, the Hall of Fame is, and you can nominate people on there. Please nominate. These were, are good for six years, um, and that'll help us uh, continue this legacy and to recognize um, these great members of our high school. There are also a few members from previous uh, classes of our Hall of Fame that I just want to make mention that are here tonight. Uh, Dr. David Moore, uh, Jay Coulter, John Milholland, Van Sitten, Janelle Smith, and Karen Kowalski. Please give them a round of applause. I'll have it all covered? Okay. Well, thank you guys all for coming. Uh, that's this, uh, the end of the ceremony. We'll see you next year out here at the uh, Hot Dog Festival. And please take time to talk to our uh, inductees uh, this evening and enjoy all the music and the rest of the festival. Thank you very much. See you next year.